In today's biased news, Biden gets ready to run again, Credit Suisse is in trouble, and DeSantis meets with Netanyahu. U.S. President Joe Biden is considering a formal video announcement for his re-election bid as soon as Tuesday, despite widening divides within the U.S. and precarious results in polling. Commentators are keeping an eye on a diminished schedule to suggest that age has made Biden less fit for the campaign trail, and for the White House. Biden and White House advisors seem much more positive, despite lackluster results with Biden's first term. Republican strategist Ford O'Connell said, The allure for voting for Biden in 2020 was sort of the notion of getting back to normal, referring to Trump's time in office and the COVID pandemic. He continued, The problem for Biden is that he's been in power, and things are anything but normal, especially when it comes to the economy and inflation. Biden faces serious issues over the next several years should he be re-elected, including waning economic growth, a potential recession, and forecasts of rising unemployment. These are continuations of problems that took off during his presidency, which the public has yet to recover from. Donald Trump, who has already announced his re-election bid and could be Biden's opponent again, faces opposition within the Republican Party that Biden doesn't within the Democratic one, a factor American analysts believe will play in Biden's favor. So far, Trump's competitors have tried to outflank one another towards the right, especially on divisive social issues like abortion and gun rights. Polling suggests that most Americans, including Democrats, would prefer that Biden didn't run, even as Democrats are still prepared to vote for him in a general election. Polling shows that just 26% of Americans, including 47% of Democrats, would like to see Biden seek a second term. At 80, Biden is already the oldest president in US history. If re-elected, he would be 82 at the time of his second inauguration and 86 by the end of that term. This continues a trend within American politics in which the public is made to pick between one bad choice and another, with neither being anyone's first choice. Candidates don't represent the interest or will of the American people on healthcare, education, housing, or any other important issue. They are only sympathetic to their wealthy donors and to the powerful interest groups that have bought both parties. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu plans to meet with Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis when the expected 2024 presidential candidate visits Israel this week. The visit coincides with protests over Netanyahu's plans to tighten controls on Israel's Supreme Court. DeSantis is likely seeking to establish himself as an internationally respected figure to his potential voter base, with Israel especially, as he did in 2019 when, during a trip to Jerusalem, he called Florida, quote, the most pro-Israel state in the nation. In the Salzburg state elections on Sunday, the Austrian Communist Party KPO Plus made huge gains and secured a solid fourth place in its best superlocal election results since at least World War II. This success follows the same communist winning the mayoral position in the country's second largest city last year. This is a direct result of KPO's on-the-ground involvement with working-class organizations and communities, as well as the ever-growing skepticism towards so-called moderate politics. Credit Suisse has revealed the scale of the bank run that triggered its state-backed rescue in March. The Swiss banking giant said 61.2 billion Swiss francs left the bank in the first three months of the year. Credit Suisse clients started pulling money out of the bank after it was caught up in the market turmoil that followed the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank in the US back in March. Credit Suisse had been loss-making and had faced a series of problems in recent years, including accusations of money laundering. In a handful of Ukraine war updates, Russia's Black Sea Fleet repelled a drone attack on the Crimean port of Sevastopol early Monday morning. Former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev said if the G7 moved to ban exports to Russia, Moscow would respond by terminating the Black Sea grain deal. Ukrainian advances have been reported in the Kherson region onto the eastern bank of the Dnipro River, which is controlled by Russian forces. And the highly publicized Ukrainian counteroffensive is expected to start very soon. In positive, late, but still positive news, a panel in Japan's health ministry has approved the country's first abortion pill, in a major step for reproductive rights decades after other countries made abortion medication widely available. The ministry's pharmaceutical board granted approval on Friday to the Mifigo pack, an abortion pill manufactured by British pharmaceutical Line Pharma, according to a spokesperson for the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare. That's all for today. We'll be back day after tomorrow with more news.
If you missed them, be sure to check out our previous episodes by following the links on your screen. As always, you can support the show and get the news in text form a few hours early by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash first thought.